Hey guys, it's Tom Cherams with the Fujinet Project. I apologize for the hoarseness of my voice. I'm still getting over COVID and a touch of bronchitis, so uh, my voice isn't back to 100% yet, but I wanted to do a bring up status video showing the current progress of the um, Apple II version of the Fujinet, which is currently implemented over the smart port. As we can see right here, we have in the top window here, I have my desk, which has the Fujinet here. And this is a prototype that is built from an Atari Fujinet that is attached to a uh, tap that we normally use for logic analyzers, but I'm actually using it here to adapt the signals from the Atari SIO connector over to uh, the uh, IDC uh, to DB19 connector that's used on the back of this uh, Apple to C plus right here. And um, as we can see, you can also see a status display underneath here. This particular device has been initialized. Uh, you can tell from the network uh, indicator right here that it's found the network and that uh, it is that it's connected to the network here. Right next to this is a blue indicator that uh, can be used for auxiliary functions here. And here is a yellow LED for uh, bus activity. You'll see this one blink in response to bus activity. There's also an SD card slot here that is can be used for local storage as well. And a copy of your configuration is actually also stored on the SD card as well. Uh, it is also used as storage for the virtual printer. Um, but otherwise, what we're running on here is essentially a modified version of the Fujinet firmware uh, that's in the IWM branch. You can take it, you can compile it, put it together, and wire this thing up according to the instructions in IWM.CPP and build one of these of yourself if you wish. Uh, but for now, at least, we're just going to take and uh, get this thing set up here. So I have a video window that is open. I'm going to have to turn on the Apple IIc Plus first before I activate the video window due to how my capture card uh, due to how my capture card is set up. Apologies. So I'm going to try to enable the display capture. I will have to deactivate and reactivate. Boom. And you saw that come up very quickly. As a matter of fact, we'll do that again. And that's actually loading from DigitalOcean. We can actually see in the current code right now if we go, for example, and bring this down into a code view, um, we can and actually get this guy out of the way here. Sorry, my Droid Cam OBS source. We can actually see that we are connecting to atariapps.arata.online. It's just a temporary place so we can test at the TNFS server uh, that we have set up specifically for uh, testing the Apple II emulation here. And we're opening up a little test uh, hard drive image, 32 image, 32 megabyte image that's uh, running total replay here. And as you can see, it's doing pretty well. We're basically, this is the blocks here are being streamed from the network. Get to space bar here and just kind of do a little selection. And I don't know, pick something, anything at all. I'll take Droll, sure. And we'll boot up Droll. And you can see it doing seeks down here and once it finds a linear section of blocks it reads those as fast as it can and we can see right here droll coming up and as we can see you know doing just well doing just fine and in point of fact i can go ahead and use another test image here i'll take and 
because this is so early, there's no configuration program and the disk image is being hard coded and mounted inside of the uh, disk device currently. As of right now, uh, Jeff is currently working out uh, a number of edge cases in the smart port code, particularly with regards to um, handling timeouts correctly, acknowledgements versus non-acknowledgements, uh, making sure that status information is being reported back correctly, and so on, at least for block devices here. Um, from my side, I am currently working on the first bits of test code for the first ever smart port character devices, which will be used for FujiNet control, for the network card, and for the virtual printer. And now that we've taken and compiled this out, we can see that FujiNet has reinitialized itself and I'm going to try to do a reboot here. And we're going to boot into another ProDOS image. And you can see it's moving pretty fast. And this is being streamed, you know, blocks off the network here. But you can see it's doing just fine. You can see how fast it's pushing the blocks in. Right now, because this is the second device on my smart port here, my uh, floppy drive being the first one, it's showing up as slot five drive two. And it's gonna read the directory and I forgot, this is a very large directory, so this is going to take a minute. So maybe I should have done something else, but yeah. Who knows? You can see here, though, that um, because there's a lot of seeking going around, it's issuing seek commands along with the reads. Uh, seek commands under TNFS do impose a bit of a performance penalty because they are in and of themselves completely uh, uh, atomic operations uh, requiring a complete network round trip for the seek to occur before we actually request the read of the TNFS block. It's because of the nature of the protocol itself. A little bit more about the TNFS protocol. It was, um, uh, for those who don't know and haven't been following the project, TNFS was borrowed uh, from Dylan Smith's Spectranet project, which is an ethernet adapter for the ZX Spectrum computer. Um, he wrote a very simple network file sharing protocol that could be easily adapted to systems with uh, limited computing capacity. But as we can see right here, you know, bouncing across just fine. We'll take and reboot again. Uh, okay. Quit. Quit the Protoss. And so on. But as you can see, I mean, it's it's working pretty well. You go in and, you know, start up some Apple works, I guess. And as far as the Apple II is concerned, it's dealing with a standard block device, even though the blocks are being fetched from a few thousand miles away. Oh, and we have an issue with status right here. So here you've seen the first glitch of this particular piece of software here. It looks like we're needing to fix some things with device status here. Um, anyway, so I guess I will end the uh, demo here. I just wanted to show you guys kind of where things were at. And uh, we'll be making more videos in the future, especially as uh, functionality comes up, which should be very quickly at this point. So until next time, guys, have fun.